Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today I've got 10 of your questions and I'm gonna answer them. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates, including Q and A's like this one. So when I did my 500 subscriber contest, I asked for questions and you guys provided me with tons and tons of questions. And I've already answered about 20 of those and you can check those out in the 500 subscriber giveaway live stream. I'll link that up here as well as in the description below. Okay, so we have 10 more questions here, and if you don't hear your question asked here, please put it down in the comments below, and I will add that to my Q&A list. You can ask questions on any of the videos. It's just easier for me to see them in this video. So if you have questions, put them in the comments below. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with a question from McKeegan Curencejo. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's uh, congrats, hope I'm not too late, but what are you doing to get more people involved in the hobby? Being 16 myself, I'm always curious of what others are doing. Obviously, this video will definitely help. Well, I think one of the cool things that's really happening in the model railroading world is you're getting a lot more DIY and you're integrating other hobbies into model railroading. There already was carpentry, electrical work, uh, crafts, um, painting, all those kind of things, but now you're beginning to integrate computer control, so programming, all sorts of other hobbies. Um, I would say that I don't know how many hobbies that model railroading encompasses, but you can have a lot of little sub hobbies within model railroading, and that's a really cool thing that I think a lot of younger folks are starting to realize that, yes, we all love those model railroads as a little kid, but now I can do all the other things that I like to do inside of this hobby. And that's personally one thing that I love to do. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our next question. And that is from the closest branch. And he says, thank you for helping low budget modelers like me. You're welcome, I'm one of those too. Question, is it possible to make a homemade throttle, throttle that is compatible with a major DCC brand. It doesn't need to be fancy, it just needs speed control and direction control. So if we're talking about um, a DCC controller, one great way, and I've actually done some tutorials on this, is through JMRI, and JMRI is totally free, and you can get started in it relatively cheap. Um, I think I built a whole setup for less than $100, and that's computer and everything. If you already have some parts or you have an old laptop, it gets exponentially cheaper. So one thing that I have is I have the engine driver app on my phone and so I know this isn't quite what you were asking but I actually have it hooked up right now and um, I can go ahead and I can start the engine up and you can see it running over there. I think I may actually have a little bit of a short over there. I may have forgot to throw a switch or something, but so yes, the engine driver app is a great way to have a homemade throttle. I do not have any components on my layout that are from a major brand in terms of my DCC system. I have built my entire TCC system on DCC++ and I use the engine driver app as my throttle and I've done that since day one. I'm not saying that the other throttles aren't as good. Um, I personally love NCE. Power cab systems and Digitrax is just the stuff that they do that make make it a lot easier for model railroaders to do so that you don't have to do all the wiring if you don't like to do it like I do. But you can definitely use the engine driver app or I think it's Y Throttle on iPhone. That's an Android phone. Um, I think Y Throttle, it does the same thing. And you can set that up and I have tutorials for that and I will link those in the description below. All righty. So we have a question from Pierre Luc Gagnon. Uh, first of all, I want to show you something really cool that Pierre sent me. Um, he um, he built the DCC Plus Plus system that I gave tutorials on, and he actually did. And I got to show you guys this because it's really really cool. He 3D printed a case for it, and I mean, just look at that thing. That that is some that is some serious work right there. Look at that. I mean, that is impressive right there. That's actually, I mean, that you're already beyond me, Pierre. 
Um, so let's get back to the question right there. Um, Pierre, let me get your question up right here. Pierre says, hey Jimmy, do you know if it'd be possible to hook some sort of Wi-Fi module to a DCC++ base station so it connects to my home Wi-Fi network instead of using a USB cable? My computer's in another room and I don't want to have a super long USB cable that goes through the walls. Thanks for your time and happy 500 subs. Well, my first inclination was to look at Wi-Fi modules on the actual DCC++ system, and that's when I bought one of these. This is a Wemos D1. I don't even think they actually make these, but it's compatible with Arduino. And I thought, okay, so if I can figure out how to do that, then we should be good to go. The only problem that I ran into is that DCC++ only works with an Arduino Uno and an Arduino Mega. Um, it actually detects, and when I tried to install DCC++ on this thing, um, it said, How, do not detect Arduino Uno or Mega. So um, that is the major problem you're going to run into with this. The solution that I'm going to try, and I've found some tutorials on how to do this, is wireless serial communication, which is the USB um, universal serial bus. Um, what we can do is we can hook a transmitter receiver to an Arduino, and I've seen how to do that online. I gotta figure out how to do that. And it should be able to transmit back and forth. Um, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna see if it works. If it works, you know there will be a tutorial on it, but I'll keep you guys updated on that. So that's the, the angle of attack I have on the wireless DCC++. All righty, what do we got next here? We've got Jamestown34, and he writes, I'm always thankful for any tips since I haven't been model railroading since I haven't been model railroading for two decades. Question: What are your favorite railroad lines? Well, I have a couple actually. Um, my favorite class one, I think, is simply because I've grown up seeing it, is uh, Norfolk Southern, with CSX being a close second. And uh, I mean, I feel kind of bad because I, I like them all. Um, I personally think BNSF and Union Pacific have the best paint schemes. Um, but if we get into short lines, my home state of North Carolina has a lot of cool little short lines. Um, some of them, the Aberdeen, Carolina and Western, which runs through Pinehurst, where they have the, uh, the U.S. Open sometimes. Um, another one of my favorites is the Yadkin Valley Railroad. I think that's run by Gulf Mobile in Ohio now. It used to be its own little railroad. But that runs from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, up to North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And... The other one that I really like, it's actually a really, really tiny one, and I mentioned it in the chat, and it actually would be kind of a bit of a challenge to model, is there's a little tiny short line up where, uh, up towards the foothills, it's called the Caldwell County Railroad. It's all in, it goes into a little bit into another county, but it's all in one little county, and they actually run GP-16s, and I'm not, I'm not messing that up, GP-16s, it's a slightly modified GP15. Um, it's something to do with the uh, the nose of the engine. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I don't know of any company that makes a ready-to-run GP16 model. So you have to scratch build or 3D print them um, and fit them over like a GP15 or a GP9. Um, so it's something that I potentially would like to try to do is to model a GP16 just because I love that railroad um, but if anyone knows of where I could buy a GP16 in in scale uh, let me know um, preferably an unlettered one um, so that or an undecorated one rather so that I could do the modeling for that railroad the Caldwell County Railroad there are some rail fanning videos of that I think that they only serve um, four or five industries it's a very small railroad they only have two locomotives um, so let's uh, let's keep moving on here, and we have Marcus Wilsmeyer. Hey, Marcus. Um, his question is, what got you interested in model railroading as well as producing videos? Well, model railroading is something that my father and I shared when I was a kid. Um, we built several layouts, um, all of them being in scale, and we also built an HO scale New York Central Pullman kit. Um, I think, uh, I think Vinny, uh, BNSF 6951 asked me, um, 
once about some of my favorites. And New York Central is definitely one of my favorite older railroads. Um, I know it's part of Norfolk Southern now, and it became Penn Central. Uh, but New York Central is one of the, my favorite older railroads. Um, but that's what really got me interested. It's probably my father's interest, and we had a lot of fun together. And uh, we built an um, in-scale layout. We built an O-scale layout. And we even built a garden railroad, which, by the way... Um, Garden railroads are some of the hardest things to maintain. So you guys out there that have garden railroads, more power to you because I had a time with mine. Um, in terms of video production, video production has gone back for me for nearly just as long. I've broken several family camcorders when I was a kid. Um, went to school for it. Um, I'm a... I'm a television producer now, or a, a creative services producer, which basically means that I produce commercials for a living. Um, so I, I just love video production, and it, to, to combine it with model railroading was just kind of a logical step for me. So I hope that answered your question. Um, we're going to move on here to Michael Gibaltera. I hope I'm saying that right, Michael. Um, thank you for your question. He says, what switching machines do you like, use, and recommend? Are there ones that don't require a lot of modifications to the table? Well, I my layout is Kato Unitrack, so all of the switch machines are built in, which means all I gotta do is drill a tiny hole through the layout and run my wire. Um, that to me, um, I'm trying to think of which one. So Kato Unitrack, Bachman Easy Track, and Atlas Snap switches um, that already have the uh, the switch motor on them. Um, those are probably the easiest simply because all you have to do is drill a tiny hole and run a wire through. That being said, um, it takes a little finesse, but tortoise switch motors are not that overly complicated to to install. Um, it's just one tiny hole up the layout for your control for your guide rod. Um, if you have in scale, it's better if you um, put that on the side, and you may have to do some some drilling. But definitely the the Atlas snap switches, um, which I have experience with on the HO side, um, Kato Unitrack and Bachman Easy Track, those are going to be your easiest switches to wire in terms of minimal work on the table because you're just you're just popping holes through the layout and then just running a wire through. So that. Um, but that being said, tortoise switch motors and similar designs, those are, those are, not, those are not all that difficult when it comes to um, installation, in my opinion. So, but there, I hope that answers your question. So let's keep on moving here. Um, cool Topped writes, loving the videos. Do you have other frugal tips for a model railroad besides shopping around the dollar store? I thought that was a great idea. Well, I think the number one frugal tip that I can give you is eBay. eBay is the place to find deals on rolling stock. On I've bought rolling stock. I've bought buildings. I've bought locomotives. Um, you have to make sure that you're buying from someone reputable. Um, one of my personal favorite stores to buy from on eBay is Trains on Tracks. Um, in terms of in scale, you can buy, they have a lot of pre owned sets of five or six uh, pieces of rolling stock and in scale for $30 plus $10 shipping. I bought several packs of those. Um, eBay is my number one tip for being frugal. Another tip I have is to kind of think outside the box when you're buying stuff. So my layout back there is actually built on two hollow core doors. And if you buy hollow core doors new, they cost about $30 for those. Those are um, 80 inch by 30 inch hollow core doors, both of them are. Um, but if you go to places like the Habitat for Humanity Restore, you can find them for $10, and that's actually where I found those. Um, another tip, if you wanna save on bench work, um, look for inexpensive folding tables. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones here. Uh, basically just, just looking in the pre-owned section. Anything that's not scenery or essential is a good place to, to look. The one things that I don't really skimp on, yes, I, I buy used locomotives, but I make sure that they're good. I don't skimp on locomotives and I don't skimp on track work. Um, everything else is up for grabs. So that, I hope, answered your question right there. So let's go ahead and move on to... 
Pat's one two eight seven one 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 two three four five six seven. Um, he says, "I think I think your layout is great, and what's the best way to add a background to your wall?" So I have two ways of doing this. Um, one is, and I wish I would have brought the picture here for this. Um, one is a photo backdrop, which is which is definitely more difficult. Um, I'm a, I've actually watched a few videos from the Oregon Joint Line channel on doing that. And I'm trying to think, I think that's the way that I'm gonna do my background. It's gonna be interesting and I'll let you guys know how I do that. Um, another way is simple paint. Um, I like to do spray paint for the sky, um, find a good sky color spray paint, and then I like to do um, stencils, where you'll have, where you cut a little stencil out of a piece of uh, foam core or cardstock, and you can make your hills and make your mountains. And um, I do that on sheets of foam core, and then you just stick them in the back, or you can use any type of paper that you want, really, um, as long as it's not too thin, um, cardboard. Um, cardstock, like thicker types of paper. I, I, I hope that I think I answered your question. Um, but I am going to probably try and do a photo backdrop. I've done some testing with some large matte prints that I've had, and and it looks really really good. So it's going to be interesting, and you know that I'll do a tutorial on it if it works out. So let's go ahead and go to our next question. Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas has been a subscriber for me for a long, long time. Um, him and I have had channels that are growing together. So if you have not subscribed to Mike, he's doing some cool stuff. Um, I especially liked all the stuff that he was doing with his lake. Um, go ahead and subscribe to him. Um, he is one of my early, early subscribers. But Mike Thomas says, it's been a struggle to find where to buy things. You might need especially, um, you might need for specialty um, scratch building like windows, doors, etc. Do you know, or is there a one-stop shop to buy these things? Maybe starting with the links somewhere. Um, so I think it's a, that's a great idea for links to show where to buy all these things. Um, one place that I get, the, I'm lucky enough to have a model, my local model railroad store, it's 50 miles away, um, that, I, that I go to is Carrie's a lot of stuff including scratch building parts um, and they carry a lot of titchy train stuff that's one brand that I highly recommend and I actually use on my layout back there um, Walther's also makes some roof detailing kits for industrial roofs um, but if you're looking for windows and doors definitely titchy trains it's very very affordable and I do know that modeltrainstuff.com does carry titchy train parts and they come in multiple scales so that's probably modeltrainstuff.com has a lot of this stuff and that's probably the best place to look for that mike um, good to hear from you man so let's go to our final question of the day and that is from brett doc um, brett doc says are there any neat ideas you have for making a badass under the tree christmas display the train running in a circle bores me, and I would love to make things pop with lights and scenery. Well, I think that the, first of all, I love that question because I've been trying to do that, and neither my dogs or my wife would like that, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> um, the way that I would definitely do that is definitely a bigger scale, O scale or G scale. Um, Lionel makes a ton of Christmas sets, so you can just buy a starter set. Another thing you can do with that is, you know those um, those Christmas buildings that, that people collect and they build their Christmas towns, their Christmas villages. You can put stuff around that. You can, now we all have all these battery powered little LED light displays or light strings. You can wrap cars with that. Um, you can do all sorts of that. Another thing you could do is rather than having a full train run through, you could have a trolley run through. I know that Bachman makes a point to point trolley that goes back, that auto reverses and goes back and forth and you can buy and it's HO scale and it runs on easy track. So that's another thing that you can do. Basically just, just, just throw the realism out the window when it comes to a Christmas display and just have fun with it. Um, you can get some batting and make snow. That's, I, th I think I might have to try and make one of those this year just because you asked that question.
So that's all the questions that I have for you guys. Um, if you have a question or I did not get to your question, go ahead and write it in the comments below. I'll put it on my Q&A list. Um, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates, including more Q&As. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and until next time, happy railroading.